my mind day after day and I couldn't put aside. So I started a petition which followed into an international campaign, did speeches, rallies worldwide, created a small documentary on the case. Finally, media started to pick up the story and by then, by the end of the campaign, we had about 350,000 signatures on the petition. Um, this was the weight we needed to approach NGOs like Amnesty International, other human rights groups, and get interest from parliamentarians. The Canadian Parliament took interest in our story, um, invited me to Ottawa where I spoke to members of Parliament. And following that, went to the United Nations, presented the boxes of petition, and they assured me that they would send this to Geneva. And just to make sure, I followed up with Louise Arbour, the High Commission on Human Rights here in Geneva, and she assured me that action was being taken on the case. And they were reminding Iran of their obligations under these certain covenants. There was so much pressure around the world through my space supporters, individual people like you and me, writing letters, that the head of judiciary in Iran was forced to grant her a stay of execution and order a new trial. The new trial took place in January of 2006 and 2007, and she was exonerated of all murder charges. Now, while two of the five judges wanted her to be released unconditionally, three of the judges said that she used excessive force while trying to dis uh, offend, uh, offend herself, uh, defend herself. So they wanted her to pay blood money to the family of the victim. So the lawyers tried to appeal this, but they weren't successful. So we raised about $43,000 in blood money. And this would, would have been double than it would have been for a man, because again, her life is worth less. Nazanin Fateh is now free. She's living with her family. She lives in poverty, so it's still a hard life for her. And her dream is to become a lawyer one day so that she can defend other women like her. It was important for me to share her story with you because not only does it highlight the injustices, but it speaks to the important message that the power of the individual is strong. Each and every one of us has the power to make the difference, to potentially save a human life. And if 350,000 people had that defeatist attitude that they weren't going to sign the petition because they thought nothing would happen, then I don't know where Nazanin would be t here today. Since Nazanin's release, we've founded Stop Child Executions, um, an organization to permanently put an end to this situations of children on death row. In Iran, there's about 140 children remaining on death row. Eight children were executed last year. Seven the year before that. But I'm grateful through our organization and through the international community, we've saved about seven lives. I just found out a couple days ago there was this one girl who was in an imminent situation, but she's received a two month stay of execution. So I'm hoping that we'll continue uh, with um, pressure for her. Now, what we have learned through our campaigning is that the best thing is not to remain silent. We've seen time and time again that when we put pressure on the media, on our diplomats, and on the world stage, it is that's when children are not executed and the others who are facing abuses in Iran. I would like for you to please keep your voices raised for these children on death row and for the persecution of ethnic and religious minorities in Iran, ethnic minorities like the Kurds and the Turks and others, religious minorities like Christians, Jews, Sunnis, al Yasin, dervishes, and particularly the Baha'i community that are not even considered a religion there and who are prevented from going to universities. Also, The detainment of prisoners of conscious, um, political prisoners, journalists, web bloggers who say anything remotely anti-regime who are now imprisoned and tortured by the, um, by the regime. And of course, the fight for women's equality. So on that, I'd like to just 
thank you for being here and the organizers and with a strong united voice we can bring we can break the barrier of injustice and intolerance and discrimination thank you very much thank you nazanin it is especially wonderful to hear that each of us has the power each of us has a voice to do something especially when we think about the context of our next speaker, um, Jibliel Hamid, among, in the middle of, of the genocide in Darfur that we've been witnessing, that we've seen in our media, and what have we done? So, Jibliel Hamid is the head of the Darfur Peace and Development Center, one of the main organizations raising awareness about the situation in Darfur. They are located here in Switzerland, and they are um, working to, to raise awareness for the UN as well. Um, Jibliel, I pass this to you. Thank you. <clears throat> I would like to thank you all, the audience here today. I'm very grateful and honored to be among you here. And as I was before three days ago on Sunday morning, and on Monday morning also somewhere in the UN buildings. So I am the one of the few luckiest one from Darfur to, who survived the genocide, which is still rolling on with this, in a slow motion. So I'm really grateful also for the Jewish students of whole Europe, or I will say whole continent, who supported <coughs> us from the beginning until today, they're still supporting us. And I'm very honored and grateful for this help. <laughs> Thanks a lot for you. If I was in Darfur, I was not going to survive to be here today, to be the voice for the victims. These people, my village was uh, being burned down 20 years ago, and I will not say that uh, war started two or three years or six years ago. For me, the war started a long time ago. 20 years ago, I lost, I think, I, mean, I would say half of my family. So for me, the meaning of life is nothing. So I have just get the power to fight for the rest of the nations who are still remaining and who is still alive, and by your help, that I can achieve this goal. So I need your support. And I need you, when you go back from here today and you go back to your country where your residence is or where you're living, please try to pass this message. There is human tragedy. There is disaster going on in Darfur. Nobody will say, that we don't know. We know it. We saw it. We saw the awful images. We saw a lot of pictures of the dead kids, women, all elders, and just thrown on the ground. Nobody was even able to bury them. Young girls under age of eight years, years they were being raped. We have hundreds of thousands of women which are raped and they are just suffering in silence. They have no voice. I'm here to present them, to tell them, to tell you there's something awful going on. And I want you to support us, as you're supporting me always, to stop this genocide, to survive or to save what we can save. It is not too late to, say, to save some lives. We have some times or some chances to save some lives. My message to you is that these people, they have to be here that something is going on. And I will tell you, since Monday, I am really tired when I hear about the name, this name which is called the United Nations. It is an awful name for me. It's horrible. 